Hello, Gil here with Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and today we're back aboard Last Affair. It seems like when it rains, it pours. I've had a couple of things that have broke, so this week I happened to notice the freshwater pressure pump was dripping right between the pump portion and the housing. So I'm going to show you how we go about diagnosing and troubleshooting that issue. Um, and I, I did that already. It's a couple of days after I took it apart, so this video is going to be uh, all one video and in, in looks like it's in sequential. But there's about a three-day period here between the start of the video, the disassembly, and the actual assembly because I needed a part and it came in today. So if you can see this right here, let me move my hand. I got water coming right off the side of the housing there. Can you see that? Basically streaming right out there. This is a little bit of an odd angle here, but I'm gonna to attempt to uh, show you this without getting my camera. These are nice. These has these quick disconnect clips. quickly disconnected and dropped right out of there. So um, I always assume this is what a dentist feels like. You can't really see what you're working on. You gotta be able to feel for it. Maybe use a mirror. A little practice, you can usually get to exactly what you're shooting for, which I believe I just did here. Move this out a little bit so I can get to the Plug, uh, screws. <laughs> That's not good on the good camera. Now I know why it was so hard to undo. There was a lot of pressure on that sucker. Ugh. Let me dry off the camera. So I've got the pump pulled out. This is actually a Jabsco V-Flow 5.0. It's a variable flow. I don't believe they make these anymore. I actually really like this pump. Um, rather than having to have an accumulator tank, which has an expansion valve uh, in it or a, uh, a bladder, what happens is you turn on the water, the pump pressurizes that ballast, and then when you turn that, it and when you need pressure, the ballast continues to apply the pressure to the lines, not making the pump have to kick on as, as often. But these variable flow motors actually will vary the actual speed of the motor based on the pressure required. So it's a little bit more of a sophisticated pressure switch on the front. Um, the last time I looked, I couldn't get one of these for the other boat, so I don't know if they're not making them anymore. Um, so these are these quick disconnects, and the way it works is, let me see if you can see this, there's actually just a little slider here, you slide this thing out, and then this, the lines disconnect right off of it. Uh, this is just a water filter, uh, I'm going to take that off, but, but basically we have water inlet here, pressure switch, and water outlet there, it's that simple. Uh, and what I was seeing is, there was water kind of coming out of the back of this housing right along here. So, for your listening pleasure, we have McKinley singing over there. Um. Now it's just a matter of using a wrench or nut driver to remove all these bolts to take the pump off the motor housing. It's real important we go nice and slow so we keep everything in the order it was supposed to be. Alright, so we've got this part out. I'm just going to okay, be careful that it doesn't fall. I'm going to move that aside. Ah, I do have a little crack in here. I can see a, uh, I can see a small hole. That's going to let some of that water bleed through there. Heavy wind. Wow. Look at the wind is blowing like you would not believe all of a sudden that rain. You feel the boat moving around? You feel how much we're rocking? Is that crazy or what? It's fun, huh? Yeah. Yeah. All right, I think the front's gone by, but I wanted to put something up here just so you can see the boat moving around. I mean, we're in a dock in a slip uh, four miles up a river on the other side of a, la of a lake. Um, so it's normally not any kind of seawater or, or surge, but boy, this, this wind front that just came through on this storm is just crazy. It's thunder and lightning and everything else. So the next step here is to rotate this outer housing until you line it up with the shaft of the motor. And then it's just a matter of getting an Allen uh, nut down, an Allen wrench down onto the shaft nut and rotating it. All right, and it's come off. 
So I'm going to see if I can get this apart, but basically to take the four screws out of the back side of this, and then we'll be able to pull these components off, and then this, um, this diaphragm will come right off. And I believe my issue, if you look really closely right in here, I have a small hole right there. So what basically happens is that this is, the, this is sealed off, and the water chamber is right here. So as this vibrates around, as it moves around like this, it's actually pumping water in and out of this thing. And I think that little pinhole right there is essentially let water get behind. This is the water chamber section here. And the motor sits back here. It essentially let water go in behind this bellows. It's the reason why this looks so rusty, I'm assuming. And it would sit in here and sort of drip out the bottom of the motor housing. So I'm going to clean this whole thing up and see if we can't get it to work with a rebuild kit. If not, we'll have to buy a new pump. But Rebuild kit's probably going to be 50, 60, 70 bucks versus a pump for 350, 450, 400. See that, okay. The set screw goes right here, and the shaft obviously goes through here. So you have to line up these little weep holes on the side with that uh, Allen wrench to be able to adjust this. So, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we are going to disassemble this. It might be easier for me to turn this. Uh, essentially, the screw's connected to this piece here. And this is what holds the whole thing together. So, let me just get all these off of here real quick. Take the diaphragm off. I'm going to keep it in the same order so I know how it goes on there. Now, here's the interesting thing. I'm going to take this off of here. We get all, eat all of these screws, too, because we actually don't need those. They are in the rebuild kit, but we'll hang on to them just because it's always good to have them in case one of these things breaks or something. This piece inside here has a crease in it. And you see that crease going up and down? And you have to bend this a certain way to be able to get it through. So we're basically gonna take this piece, we're gonna fold up one side so that we can ultimately get this out. And that's important to note because we're gonna have to do the same on the other one. So let's unbox this part and see what we have. Do you wanna come over and help me? Yeah. All right, come on over. All right, I got my helper. You wanna say hi to everybody? Yeah. So when I went to order this part, I went over to West Marine, and believe it or not, West Marine actually doesn't stock this, nor can they get it. They had to special order it from the manufacturer. So I went online and I searched for the parts um, out of the repair manual. I had the actual part number for it. Searched online, and I found a bunch of places that had them. Um, and it was interesting, some of the places you really had to look at the shipping, because you might find a part for $23, but then the shipping might be $28. Uh, I think I ended up paying about $30 for this with about $4 shipping. So um, this worked out well. It was from... Uh, um, I can't remember the name of it place. I'll look it up in a minute. It was in Clearwater, Florida. It was, it's from a, something like Pumps Unlimited or something like that. You can also order a lot of these on Amazon, so I'd encourage you to look at it. But just check the shipping because it was interesting. Like I said, shipping was expensive with some of these. So we're going to go ahead and open this up and see what we have. Uh, it was from PumpAgents.com. So if you need any parts, um, nope. PumpAgents.com was a great place to get it. All right, let me help you here, okay? I'm doing it by myself. Okay, you want to do it by yourself? Well, use this here. I'll help you. You you pull toward me. You ready? All right, can you hold it up to the camera and show everybody? All right, that's our rebuild kit, so we're going to get going on that. So we're going to open up the rebuild kit. You'll notice the parts look familiar. I have my rubber housing. I have my four feet that hold the diaphragm in place. Yeah, Grandpa, I can't see. All right, just a second, baby. I also have my four screws, and I have the diaphragm itself. I mentioned before this, uh, this line, this horizontal fold in here, vertical, the way it's held now. Um, that's to get this thing into this housing. It's too big to fit in that way. So we want to basically start by putting it in this way, and then we're going to crease it right there. Right? So we're going to bend it at about a 90 degree angle. And you don't have to force it. You just have to get it past these two lips, and it drops right down in there. Right? So you just line it up straight. Now, as I mentioned before, the order we want to put these is the indentation side is where these go. So we're going to push all these in place so this stays nice and tight on here. And we're now going to, I'm going to set that down and we're going to set this on top of it. What we're really doing is these pieces need to line up and um, see if you can see that. They need to go right inside of each of those little um, housing pieces. So I'm just going to get all those lined up. And I will say it's a little easier to put two in first and get a screw in them just because of that fold in there. And now we're going to do the same thing here. These screws are going to go down 
through this metal um, bearing assembly and into the actual plastic housing and through that into the um, into the rubber pieces down below. Once the part is assembled, it's now time to mount it back onto the motor shaft. So what I've done is I put this set screw in place and I actually have the Allen wrench sitting through one of the weep holes as I'm pushing it in there. So once I've slid it onto the shaft and lined it up with the divot on the shaft, I'm able to just tighten the Allen nut. Um, this is a little bit hard to film, so I apologize for that, but I wanted to at least do a voiceover of what I did. At this point, we're just reversing the process. So we're lining up the screws, um, putting them through the actual pump uh, assembly housing and they screw into the base of the motor. So I'm just using a nut driver to tighten these back up and not cranking down too tight because it is a plastic housing. We want them tight, but not so much that we uh, chance cracking it. And now as we go back into the engine room, again, it's a reversal of the process. So I'm starting by connecting up the, uh, the output line to the side of the motor. I'm gonna go ahead and put on the uh, inbound line from the tank and connect up the wire connections um, I'm doing a little testing here, but I'll come back and put shrink wrap over these again since I had to cut the shrink wrap on my connections when I took this all apart. At this point, it's ready to test out. Thanks for watching. Okay. See you next week. I keep doing that. I keep burping. You keep burping? Yeah. What do you say when you burp? Excuse me. Excuse you. That's right. You can okay. help me open this and show everybody what's in it, okay? It's an egg? Yeah. I don't think it's an egg. It is an egg. Uh. We're not done yet. Okay. <sighs> it's still right there. What's still right there? My right hand is right there. Right here? No, right there. Oh, it's on the screen? Yeah. Oh, okay. <gasps> Me is on the screen too. Yes. Hey everybody, thanks for watching, and please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even Tumblr. Please take a moment and go over to our website at svdreamchaser.com to download free resources for cruising and how-to projects. Get your thumbs and mouses ready. We also have a couple of links right on the screen for some other playlists and videos that we think you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching, fellow dreamers.